always thought of you as kind of a, a European style hotelier, but I came across this uh, neat Yale University Press book called Hotel. You probably have it. It has a you know ding thing on the the front. I can see that. But it, it describes hotels as being kind of the origin, the physical manifestation of a distinctly American vision of mobility, civil society, and democracy, and that it was actually the life of lobbies, how they were so entirely open to locals and travelers, that actually promoted the idea of uh, democracy in, uh, in America. And that Europeans found, them, th th found that style kind of uncomfortable and too impersonal. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. In our business in the United States, there's a publication called Hospitality and Lodging. I always find it interesting that the trade actually distinguishes between the two. Uh, we are involved in the hospitality business. Hilton is involved in the lodging business. And uh, I think, the, to me, a great hotel has always been the same. And not, so I somewhat disagree with that, in that, to me, the ho great hotels of Europe have always been um, central points. You know, César Ritz, who created the, the Ritz in Paris, was the first to sort of bring high society to sort of more more the cafe society made, made hotels and hotel restaurants and lobbies uh, sort of acceptable as, as social gathering places. Um, what was interesting to me, that the, but the, the importance of, uh, of using a hotel as a symbol, for example, during the Cold War, right after the Second World War, uh, the CIA actually was a big investor in Hilton International, and the, the architectural Typology that was used in the sort of the Hilton, the Berlin Hilton, the, the Beirut Hilton, with you know sort of large plate glass storefronts, the very transparent uh, ground floor spaces was very much a part of uh, the the propaganda of, of American the American society. We were a transparent society. There was a there was an openness to it uh, and inviting. And I think sort of what you, that quote is alluding to is is that effort amongst uh, sort of the American hotel industry. And, and, but, but except for that, uh, truthfully, the American hotel industry really was about uh, lodging, which is really about just beds. Uh, you know, hospitality as a culture, as, a, as an inviting embrace of people, uh, has largely been neglected. And that is why, uh, you know, the so-called boutique hotels, you know, when Ian Schrager and Steve Rebell sort of started Morgan, they coined that phrase, it was really about uh, sort of personalizing, again, the, the uh, hotel industry. But they seem to be open to kind of an exclusive in-crowd rather than <coughs> inviting, you know, neighbors and community to also, you know, hang out in the lobby or use the that, restaurant. That, that's true. and and, and the standard itself is, is a, um, it was conceived 10 years ago, I was thinking of ways to, to bring the, the kind of qualities that made a hotel experience very special, which previously had only been relegated to luxury hotels. And I was thinking of ways, how could you bring that kind of attention to detail, that kind of social environment to an affordable uh, product? And we, we, 10 years ago, converted a, an old retirement home that had been built as a 1960s era motel in Hollywood into the first standard. But uh, the standard has always been about being very open. And uh, this is the first standard uh, that we've been able to you know, build from ground up. In fact, it's the first hotel I've built from the ground up. The two other attempts, one was the building we built, built with Jean Nouvel which was supposed to be a luxury hotel. And the other one was the building we did with Richard Gluckman, which was supposed to be the original standard hotel. Both of those were converted from hotels, were fully designed, and then were converted from hotels to condominiums in the aftermath of 9-11, because we couldn't get any bank to believe in the tourism industry in New York. What, so this, I have to ask you, of course, what your first hotel experience as a child was, and the kind of impression well, I, I, I grew up in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we used to go as a family to a, a little inn called the Concord Inn, which is an old, old inn, and we used to just stay in the public rooms, but I loved the, 
it, there was always a flickering fire, and it sort of felt to me like a, uh, you know, it was like a public living room. Yeah. That was one experience, and the other one was I uh, was traveling with my father when I was about 11 years old, and we, we, we went to Baden Baden. Oh, wow. I went to the great spa there, and that, that, that was so grand and, and sort of sensual. But those were kind of the two very early That's pretty amazing, yeah. And um, what, so, in a way, how do you go about, you, you've referred a couple of times to um, making things just right. And so what do you go about, if, if you're, in a sense, with a hotel, kind of a dramaturg, setting the stage for things being a certain way, how do you initiate that process? What do you actually do? Well, you know, I, it's a lot um, like, I like to draw the analogy to the sort of the old time process of, of producing a movie. It used to be that a, a film studio, uh, you know, the, the producer would have an idea, let's do a surfing movie. And they would then uh, hire a writer to come up with a script and revise it 15 times and then hire a director and hire actors and hire scene, you know, production designers. And uh, it's the orchestration of all of that. This is really what, what we do. I mean, this is a very, um, it's, a, it's, it's a continuous process. And I think, I'd say one of the interesting things about this building uh, is that unlike most hotels or indeed most buildings built anywhere in America, this building was designed and developed by the end user. There are very few buildings like that. The Seagrams right. building is one. But, but usually the way the, the commercial production of buildings works in the United States is that a developer was basically, their business is, uh, man, I love this phrase when I first heard this, they manufacture buildings. And the, the, in, in a manufacturing process, you, know, you make your money by, by manufacturing less expensively and then selling it to someone for the highest price you can. Uh, but so you're doing two things. You're really convincing them to buy it and cutting the costs, which is the wonderful phrase value engineering. Um, but I think what happens is that, that uh, typically a hotel in New York, for example, would be built by developers. Somewhere along the way they would decide, okay, we're bringing in the Four Seasons a Ritz-Carlton, a W, whatever. And somewhere along the way, they get a spec book from that, that firm that says, you know, we're going to decorate it this way. We want the rooms to be no less than whatever square feet. And uh, you end up with a, a fairly flat product that's decorated in a different way. But that's because the, the developer is not actually planning to use it. 